Hello farmers and welcome to the Kenyan farmer. Today I would like to mention some few methods that you can consider in your farm to conserve soil moisture and maybe improve on crop production. In our previous video on soil moisture and evapotranspiration, plant coverage affects evapotranspiration. Crops that have good coverage will have less moisture loss via evaporation. You can mix tall with short crops like maize and beans. This will not only improve on nutrition, but also ensure efficient moisture use. You should ensure that your farm is clean. Weeds will not only compete for soil moisture and nutrients, but can also hide pests and diseases. The best way to keep the cost of weeding and effect low is by controlling the weeds when they are still small. You will spend less resources if you control the weeds when they are still small. Weeds are naturally vigorous and the competition between our crop and the weeds is never fair. You can also decide to cover the soil with mulch. This will control both moisture loss by evaporation and also germination of weeds. Use of mulch is ideal for kitchen gardens. For large-scale farmers, that may not be practical or even economical. I have found out that in hot areas, the mulch can also attract pests like termites. But I guess you can find a way to control them. Horticulture farmers normally use plastic mulch, which can control moisture loss, weeds growth, and even repel some pests. If you can afford, this is the best option. Construction of terraces in slopy land helps in control of soil aeration and improves in soil conservation. I once did a video on various types of terraces used in Kenyan farms. You know, most agricultural activities in Kenya are not in flat land. The topography is hills and valleys in some areas. Terraces catch the runoff water during rainy season. This gives time for water to seep into the soil, improving on effective rainfall. Use of shade nets by Kenyan farmers is gradually being adapted as a method to control moisture loss. And they also help in control of pests and diseases. Shade nets are not only used in nurseries but also in the field. They help to control the sun heat or radiation. You know that sun's heat increases evapotranspiration. Setting up a shade net is very easy and the benefits are many. In hot areas, if you have ever grown crops like sukuma under a shed net, you will realize that the leaf area is usually considerably big compared to when planted in direct sunlight. The quality is also good because the leaves are not as tough. Planting trees around your farm is a good thing. Trees will act as windbreak. Strong weeds do not only damage your crop, but also increase the rate of evapotranspiration. Wind will quickly carry away moisture. The choice of trees to be planted also matter. You may plant some trees that are favored by birds. Birds that will someday come and damage your crop. Most Kenyans who use tractors in land preparation use disc plows. People like it because it works very well in areas with obstacles like stones or roots. It just rolls over them. But you will realize a disc plow may not plow deep enough. In some areas like lower eastern Kenya, soils compact easily and rainwater may not percolate deep into the soil as expected and so it is recommended that you sometimes use a reaper or even chisel plow and allow the rainwater to go in deep well you may as well consider using a ridger if you can't get such an implement near you you can approach your county agriculture section and ask for assistance the main benefit of a ridger is because it's shaped in a way that it does not only plow deep but also make ridges that catch runoff water. The ridges are also ideal for planting crops like potatoes. 
such implements may cost more to hire, as obviously tractors will use more fuel as opposed to disc plow. Now, in case you are clearing new land, you may consider going for the big boy, a bulldozer. A bulldozer will have a reaper attachment behind. He has a set of clothes that can be used to do the same job, sometimes even better. You see, the deeper the implement goes, the better the water penetration in the soil. Today, small scale farmers can also change the plow types to new models of mini ridges. You know, the complete stunning or opening up of the soil is being discouraged. Farmers are adapting conservation or minimum tillage, a topic that deserves its own video, I think. The choice of an irrigation method that a farmer chooses also matters. Some methods are not as efficient in water use. Sprinkler water is easily carried away by wind. This method is cheap but not precise, very lossy. The water spreads everywhere, also helping the weeds to germinate. So far, the best method is the drip irrigation method. Drip irrigation is costly, but at some point, your investment will surely pay off. Use of organic matter is something that cannot be overlooked when doing small scale farming. Organic matter has a way of improving the water holding capacity of your soil, especially if you have sandy soils. Generally, sandy soils have low total available water that is necessary for crop growth. Now, these are not the only methods you can use for moisture conservation. You may also consider combining more than one method. That's up to you. The planting method can affect production and even influence how soil moisture is utilized. Research has shown that there are some methods that conserve moisture better than others. Most farmers plant maize in lines, one or two plants per station. Well, there is another style which involves planting crops in basins. You dig a pit like 45 centimeters deep. Backfill with a mixture of topsoil with manure. You don't fill the pit completely with soil to allow water to stand. You can even use mulch to control evaporation. These pits hold runoff water, allowing the plants to maximally use the runoff water. The method is labor intensive, but it works quite well. Once upon a time, our lovely government could allocate some funds to dig up dams and water pans. These were used especially by communities in dry areas. You see, during rainy season, these structures would collect water and the water would be used by farmers, especially livestock farmers, during dry season. This was something really good, a good initiative. What really happened? Our leaders are going for big loans for projects, but the money ends up in private pockets. Some of our leaders are just thugs, but I am sure by now they have seen the wind has started blowing and the chicken is in trouble. It has to put up with the shame. Anyway, I hope you have learned something from today's video. Remember to like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video and God bless you.